conclusion. For the people who know me, know that I'm into yoga. So in, in yoga, we say that we have the initial thoughts, then the thoughts become words, and then um, we have the actions. And if we, it's a kind of a, uh, we can say it's a kind of a, a useful way to interconnect the, these three together, these three together. So. Uh, we actually create the tools to accompany our ways of thinking, our saying as posting, or our actions as perhaps sharing and uh, uh, creating new tools. Hi, Michelle. So we can say that these are layers of perceptions or layers and metaphors for um, the reality we live. We create tools to perceive our reality at the end of the day. That, that, at least this is my opinion. And create uh, and model and act upon our environment. So in fact, the tools, if you go back to the previous slide, the human artifacts do represent the um, uh, evolution of the human culture. So we can see the web versions in a kind of a uh, linear sort of way. It's not that linear, but just for, uh, uh, just for presentation purposes. So web one, it was more about uh, one-way communication and web science and e-commerce. Web two, as we say, is, is more about participation and collaboration and interaction, communication. And Web3 is a kind of a co-creation in um, an augmented uh, uh, world as we build it from some point uh, onwards and the way we give meaning to it. So let's go to communication. Communication, we can say that we have one-way communication and two ways of communication. One way might be like, me sitting here talking to you with some participation uh, at the chat. Uh, we can say that the emails, messages, uh, webinars like this one, or reply all, message all, votes, polls, and chat box uh, can be one way communication from a human being or a computer sort of uh, software to uh, people. And um, Web2 and uh, blogging started this kind of two-way of traffic, two-way of, uh, two of communication. And you remember the chats, the forums, the wikis, uh, and the blogs, and the revolutionary sort of era we uh, came in back in uh, 2000 almost. I remember back in 2005 when I was engaged in my PhD, London South Park University, we had an online course provided to the Greek teachers uh, on um, Web 2 tools. So uh, I, thought, I don't think that many people in Greece knew about the Web 2 tools at uh, that time. I remember we have created about 18,000 blogs in one week. No jogging. It was an amazing sort of score at that time. I don't think uh, this can happen again. And um, yes, we do know a lot of uh, Web2 tools that help us in, in our communication and interactions. To, to, to build uh, communities together, groups together, work together, have fun together. So it's not about communities, and I'm not going to get into the communities. It's for later use for anyone who would like to know about some about communities and social networks, sharing common interests and um, professional sort of interests, if you like. So again, uh, I'm not going to get into the networks. I'm just going to say the last one that we are friends or Facebook, and uh, we have followers on Twitter or readers or Look, uh, I have a message saying video quality may deteriorate. I hope the video quality is good enough. So about Web 2, 
and blogs in Web2, uh, we did have an effective online communication and uh, uh, time borders, distance borders, or costs. Uh, you, you, you do know that, uh, for example, this is for free. This is pro provided by uh, with IQ, with the, which is a fantastic uh, opportunity for us to be here and all together. Otherwise, we would have paid a lot of money. So there's a lot of free software at the moment. And you, you, you can actually see the way our world is transforming through this effective and efficient online communication. So time and distance borders are down. Hello, hi from India. I have an Indian uh, picture at the back here, Shiva. And uh, co-creation, we create together, we collaborate together, we engage in communities and groups together. And what we do is we, we exchange our experiences. Some of them are really good practices, and these best practices can be uh, learned and uh, reintroduced into our, into our environments. And then we, ha we can ha have this joint development and commitment and a shared vision. Somebody said, uh, so somebody asked me what our love is. So um, people say that love is looking at each, other, each other's eyes. I'm not, I'm not so expert about love, but I do know that uh, Exupery, uh, the guy who uh, wrote The Little Prince, said that uh, love is when two people are looking at the same direction together. So this shared vision is perhaps very important, too important to... Uh, just say it in one line. And this might, might be a different presentation, possibly. Uh, again, online, we can share a sense of uh, belonging. Um, I have created a sense of community index in my PhD. The, the way you can measure the sense of belonging and the sense of uh, being in a group and exchange and the opinions and, of course, uh, share vision uh, with them. As I am a teacher and an e tutor, learning is an uh, important part of uh, my professional life. So the, the Web2 Social Knowledge Based Society can give a great leap forward for learning to and learning three. Um, and this, this affects the user and learner centered, centered design. As you know, a user is, uh, has a, a persona. And it, this person also is a learner on uh, um, a learning environment. So we have a complicated sort of persona to deal with when we come to learning design. So the tools need to have the specific affordances and be based upon learning and specific learning analytical frameworks, uh, solid theoretical foundations. So to provide this sort of um, support and facilitation for the user and learner to learn and exchange opinions and um, go beyond information given, as uh, Brunner would have said. And we do have the learning control in our uh, intra-cultural settings. Now, it's not just uh, us in somewhere in the world. It's all around the world, like, just like now. And um, the user-generated context, which is very important, because this is how we go beyond information given. This is how we acquire new skills and competencies, le like learning autonomy, self-regulation, and recognition. Uh, this is very important because uh, the people say that with empathy, what you acquire about 30% of the um, uh, abilities a person has. For example, uh, if I sit next to Nelly, then uh, I observe the way she works and I perhaps acquire 30% uh, of all her abilities the, 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 the exist at the time of the task. So from learning to, we go to 
uh, pedagogy uh, too for lifelong learning and uh, this um, new way of learning requires new requirements that, uh, uh, and to bring new learning opportunities. So, for example, we can use pedagogical scripts to support the multiple intelligences of a person, social computing, building uh, collaborative groups, and use the social and media tools to facilitate our actions and activities and convert them into specific learning targets. Research methods and ethical considerations, which are weird, if you like, if not interesting, uh, when it comes to online learning. And tutors now act as moderators mostly because we orchestrate these uh, learning activities so to convert into what we want. And all these amazing sort of internet learning environment creation create new learning ecologies and ecosystems, both in uh, formal and informal environments. This is a friend I have. She's a an amazing blogger is doing a PhD in uh, into blogs in Finland, Mariana. She's not here at the moment. Uh, she's also an English language teacher, so this is the perfect slide for her that gave this uh, to her. Possibly one day uh, she can share all her findings into blogging with us, perhaps in the next uh, festival. So, to blog or not to blog? Of course, to blog. The blogs uh, can be uh, web pages, like um, a friend of mine, uh, Anisha, she's Indian, Indian Australian, and she, she has just finished her PhD at the Center for Education and Innovation and Technology. Uh, as you said, this is just an example, but many organizations offer the um, uh, the blogs into integrated within their websites. Uh, so Anissa here has her official university blog, and she also uh, has a fantastic uh, blog called Random Syntax. It's very interesting, uh, and she's uh, into online learning and the way um, massive data analysis can serve uh, e-learning. Yes, I like my friends. I like the people uh, I work with. Uh, so, uh, as, as you remember, the initial use of the blogs was uh, kind of a diary, uh, diary tools. Like, for example, this one is more complicated. It has been more complicated lately. So we have the uh, blogs, blogs within blogs, and most visited blogs or new comments. And possibly some of them are for communicating with the organizations. Like, for example, I remember Tate, Tate in Britain. We had a project at London South Bank University with Tate. So in this project, Tate wanted to know what the people inside Tate would love to do, would, love, would like to say, or what were their experiences by uh, uh, staring a painting. Uh, so they uh, created this sort of uh, blogs uh, uh, facility, if you like, functionality. And uh, people could actually say their opinion online. And now they can do it with um, the smartphones, which uh, is a kind of a feedback, but uh, of, the, of the feedback to uh, any organization, not just uh, tape. And the comments, sometimes I see hundreds and thousands of comments and say, how on earth these people can have such an amazing post that creates so many comments? So this is our traces back. Can we actually interlink all these comments and uh, post together and create something new? Perhaps we can, we can with the new semantic web. And as for the interactivity utilization, how do we do it with the blogs? I, rem I remember the same sort of example here is with Coca-Cola, but uh, it's the same with uh, uh, museums or uh, other organizations who would like, which would like to know uh, 
about their visitors' experiences inside the um, organization or the building, if you like. So it's a kind of a pre-exhibition visit uh, in a virtual space. That the people may provide some comments or uh, uh, information or uh, preferences, if you like. Then they can direct the people's flow within the exhibition and. Um, unlock the content or have uh, some hotspot for smartphone or share online experiences, uh, interact with the um, uh, exhibits, if you like. And then we have the assessment evaluation of the visit of its user and um, visitor. So this can be done again with uh, smartphones or uh, back home when they return home uh, and they remember it, of course. So all these user-generated text is now the background for uh, new information to uh, rise, if you like, and rebuild. So we have loads and loads of data. What can we do with the data? We need to link this data, make association, and even add this, uh, add more data, edit, and work again upon it. So how can we do that? With the inquiry machines, for example. So uh, machines now can understand the logic and the meaning behind the data. And this is why semant sem semantic web is very important for the next uh, uh, era. Um, the reason I got this. Uh, title is because when I, I first saw the tag cloud on the blog, I said, wow, that's amazing. You can actually click on something, and then you have all the related information on um, uh, one click. You don't have to search anymore. So this is the reason I actually had the, the, the specific title for this presentation. And I think that this was the first sort of touch of semantic uh, meaning, if you like, into blogs. As you know now, we have blogs into blogs and uh, blogs hosted into uh, the cloud. So th this creates kind of a new opportunity to uh, have um, data around the world in the cloud and try to build the together, like for example uh, with uh, IBM, the, the company uh, provides kind of a, of a surface for conversation and thoughts on the cloud and try to find some new material for or ideas for new uh, products, if you like. And um, we go to, we, we're now going to see some uh, more uh, insights into the semantic web. I'm not a semantic web uh, expert, but uh, I do need to know uh, how this works and how can this uh, facilitate my life for the next uh, couple of years. So the semantic uh, web is a kind of a layer, a layer that is linked and uh, underpinned into the web uh, architecture layers. Uh, is a major research initiative of the World Wide Web Consortium and a metadata reads, reads web of resources that can describe themselves not only by how they should be displayed by HTML uh, or, syntactic, or syntactic XML uh, and um, as Tim Berners-Lee the semantic web is an extension of the current uh, web in which information is given well-defined meaning, better enabling computers and people to work in cooperation. So what about the semantic web? It's about the linked data, the vocabularies we use in uh, different cultural settings and contexts. And, uh, 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 and um, the, the words, the wording assets, the query uh, machines can work upon all this context, uh, inferences and vertical applications. 
but I, I think you understand what vertical applications means. I mean, uh, uh, instead of going layer by layer, is the, our work is actually on uh, uh, trying to find meaning into and within different sort of uh, databases and contexts. Uh, for example, this is a semantic map of, for example, we start with, don't know, we, we think that we would like some kind of wine, for example, now. My favorite wine is Bordeaux 2005. So from the drinks, if we go to a database with soft drinks, alcohol drinks, wines, red wines, Bordeaux and Bordeaux year 2005, we can find exactly what we want. And I'm not sure whether anyone, anybody is into uh, social network analysis or uh, an, data analysis that has kind of an influence between the words, but this is kind of a, uh, an example of how the concepts are linked and the meaning is uh, linked between the concept and uh, creates uh, inferences. So the semantic web is about me. What do I mean and uh, what is meaningful for me? For me, for example, the cheapest sort of provider is meaningful um, rather than something else. A new world starts with the semantic experiences and Google has actually started this initiative already with a semantic search. You must have seen this uh, um, information, relevant, relevant, or relevant information on the right hand side of the page for millions of search and queries so you know exactly uh, what you want to find instead of uh, something else. Uh, what is be said about you? That's sentiment uh, mining. I think this is quite interesting if you put it on Facebook as well. So how your content is received, this is more related uh, to engagement in business analytics. How about citation? Uh, how important somebody is into the um, uh, academic world, for example? And interaction, and again, uh, some kind of a, a link building strategy and building uh, websites and uh, uh, business analytics. So in what ways my website can have um, maximum online publicity uh, for video marketing or blog comments, uh, experiencing uh, uh, sort of uh, social networking which makes sense and it's uh, effective uh, article marketing or uh, finding the local profiles or local companies that uh, are linked to what I do. How about security machines of the future, detect emotional character or intent by the wording? So the semantic tools, we can see some uh, semantic tools here, like uh, we, we can see later on as well. And this is the area where we are now, uh, Web 2 and Web 3 area. And this is where semantic web is uh, located, if you like. And Blogify, yes, they. <laughs> I'm wondering how the semantic web can be linked with the blogging web. So, for example, with Google, uh, how on earth this is possible to be integrated into blogs and uh, link comments uh, within comments and postings? For example, uh, semantic approaches used in open government data, as in EU, US actually, not EU initiative. Uh, for, or to say with an example, there's some open data that are not very private. For example, uh, uh, for paramedics, some information for paramedics, basic information about patients that are not uh, uh, very, very private, are on the borderline, if you like. 
or this is a very interesting one, semantic translation. You know that we cannot translate using the uh, Google Translate. It, it uh, translates word by word. So a semantic translation would be quite important, uh, especially if integrated into posts and uh, comments. Um, another initiative is the Spotfire Cloud from the semantic community. Intend, uh, you uh, upload, for example, your Excel and explodes the information within it. Uh, or for medical purposes, the same. We can interlink uh, data for such purposes. Uh, again, uh, this is the affected ozone areas in uh, the US. People can uh, uh, blog about the ex their experiences and uh, the way this affects into uh, the, the health, if you like. So, yeah. uh, this is another one. This is a very interesting uh, example. That's a database uh, PDA which extracts structured content from the information created as part of uh, the Wikipedia. So it is available on the web and uh, you can see that you can blog on uh, a location which is very, very interesting if you like. Um, I, again, um, from an initiative from the semantic community is uh, uh, about uh, the ways to have a kind of a contextual sort of meaning into data and it, uh, entirely customizable the way people want to uh, experience uh, their information uh, seen from different perspectives if you like. And this is a nice one, Tim uh, Mazur uh, said that one. What if a machine can understand what you write and it can judge for your writing, it can judge you for your writing and then send me um, a message saying uh, you don't like this person just from his or her writing without saying anything else, without even uh, come close to that person. So Tim suggested that uh, a semantic web can be a setup of idioms and aphorisms to be updated for the specific user internet. So you can blog or you can add or you can let and uh, allow people just from what they're saying without even knowing uh, something more than this. So this is interesting from military security, gaming, and education based software to detect emotional character and intent, most of all. So time flies. And let's go back to the initial uh, target of this presentation about time and blogging time, making posting time and seeing where we came from, what do we do now, and where, where we can go uh, into the future. So what is this uh, uh, all about? Uh, it's about detecting, with all this uh, semantic information and blogging and posting, it's about seeing um, the patterns we have. And if we detect these patterns. We can see how people work in groups, in communities, in nations, if you like. Uh, we, we, we can see these patterns. And then perhaps we can uh, see exactly where they work and change them for a better future. <laughs> you missed the <laughs> <laughs> I missed the pencil as well. <laughs> and uh, sometimes the people don't have pencils on them, isn't it? So what's in to me? What, what, is, uh, this, the, uh, what, what are these tools uh, uh, to me? What is the meaning of uh, having all these tools around? Um, yeah, we can start 
uh, with conception marketing, if you like. We're teachers, we're not into conceptions, but it's a good way to start, especially in the middle of a crisis like in Greece. So in conception marketing, as you know, in Amazon, you can say, oh, if you look at this one, you can have that one. So we believe this is what you're looking or you think uh, you're looking. Another way to say it is um, meaningful dialogues between people. Uh, in most of the time, what we do is we talk to ourselves in front of another person. We are not engaged into the conversation. We just say our thing or judge the other person. We, uh, we very rarely uh, stay and listen carefully and actually respond instead of react to what this person say. So a kind of a semantic blogging, it will be a very interesting way to actually uh, build conversations together and uh, uh, create new meaning, meaning out of uh, shared meaning. A lot of uh, advantages of this sort of combination. Nelly <laughs> uh, says that's where many meaningfulness comes. Yeah. Another uh, many advantages for uh, as you as, you, as we saw uh, semantic searches, uh, engines, uh, knowledge management, most of all integration of uh, what we. Uh, do and say and work and act and uh, create even uh, wider social networks and communities that uh, can work, go around the, the planet. Uh, machine dialogues ac across domains, online advertising, anal business analytics, multimedia collection, information for the annotation. And unexpected events, I like the X factor as with uh, Marielle. I really like the X factors. So the new social semantic web is around the corner, uh, or actually is in front of me, is present. So what, am, what are we going to do with it? How is it going to affect the wiki's blogs and the social networks? How can we use it? For example, the uh, e-learning started uh, walking this direction. Like, for example, here is from King Abdul Aziz uh, University in Saudi Arabia. Uh, they uh, do uh, a lot of work and uh, provide a lot of funding for uh, semantic e-learning and e-learning advantages for such sort of uh, integration would be enhanced and adaptive learning, collaborative semantic rich learning environments, uh, students to work in collaborative tags and contribute to the ontology, that's an index of words that can be meaningful for a context, so that the teacher can direct and personalize uh, feedback for the students. And the metadata, as we said, the more specific and meaningful metadata for e-learning resources. Uh, and in this way, we can uh, compose uh, uh, new learning materials uh, in groups that are meaningful. Um, resources can be accessible to all and easily uh, reused and linked together into clusters, adaptive learning pedagogical planners. And uh, just to name a few more, enhanced reasoning and optical management of learning material, ontologies based uh, e-learning, um, linearized and fed unique responses based on the students' uh, posts, uh, responsive learning design, to name a few. So what's all about? The world is full of patterns. Uh, we can see these trajectories in our posts, in our blogs, and try to, many, to make meaning out of them. So what are the dreams that may come out of the two? Uh, 
the combination of the blogs and um, what is the future of blogging to say it differently I don't know but we, we create the future perhaps we have a semantic WordPress we know the the present we define the present so we can uh, 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 go and build our own future, create the great leap forward. So if we identify these patterns back in time, as we said, and we can change our future, predict our future and change it. That's because we can build a new model that makes uh, the existing model obsolete. That's from Buckminster Fuller. And this is where the, the subtitle stands. Ourselves, snapshots, reminiscing the past, creating the present, predicting and changing, actually, the future. Of course, we can do more than we realize, uh, uh, Nelly. And I think that people have so much potential. Like, uh, we can do anything we want. Uh, for example, what if we don't go to the semantic web? We could go to some some direction completely different than semantic web. We create what we create because we hear we hear ideas here and there and somewhere else, and we put them together. What if somebody has a completely unique idea that can slice reality and go even the greater uh, leap forward? We don't know. We can do anything that um, is provided uh, to us, or um, how to say it differently, uh, we, we can create something based on ideas, but if we don't know the idea yet, we don't know what we're going to create. So perhaps somebody can have the big idea, and everybody can follow that. In this presentation, Time was a kind of a very important uh, element, the fifth <laughs> element. So with the um, semantic blogging, if you like, we can define time. We can define our uh, patterns in the past. And we can uh, vertically break time and uh, uh, have a great leaps forwards, not just one. So, is it what, what is immortality then? Is it about if we omit time from uh, our lives, uh, since we have the semantic uh, uh, work and semantic uh, search, if you like, uh, for our meaning in blogs and comments and uh, social networks? So, we have ourselves a robotic copy of a human body or a digital self that's uh, an avatar, a version A or B or uh, D in 2045. So, uh, do, do we come in Bordo by blogging and leave traces for the rest to follow? I think that all this meaningful uh, way of uh, uh, seeing behind our backs and creating our present is most about self-reflection, seeing who we are. And it's also about presence outside our own uh, trajectories. Uh, what, what, what I mean by that is observe reality from a distance. If you have actually have tools, if you, if you, if you have um, uh, tools that uh, can present us the, the way we work and we have fun and we uh, create uh, new ideas or something or new environments, then perhaps we can see the patterns around, change the patterns, and create everything and anything we want. And this is by being present and outside of our uh, flow of 
of things. So it's all about semantics. Uh, the 10 minutes left, left for questions, if you have any questions. Thank you ever so much. Thank you so much, Nikki. I just noticed that your avatar, one of my past ones, did you, um, did you take my avatar? <laughs> <laughs> On Second Life, uh, no, this is my avatar. Actually, this is, uh, this was made uh, randomly. Exactly. I <laughs> the know. easiest avatar, if you like. I know. I went through stages, and that was one of the stages. <laughs> I had to create an avatar. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure whether I conveyed the meaning. It was a bit complicated for me. I have been I have been out of England for some time now, so. Thank you. Would would it have been easier in in uh, in Greek? No, I think it would be, it would be harder in Greek. <laughs> Italian. Wait a minute. Is it Italian or Greek or? It's it, it is, it is Greek, isn't it, Nikki? I mean, the name is Greek. Yeah, but completely Greek. Uh, uh, from uh, Peloponnese, a very specific area. So. I'm not sure whether you had this. Uh, no, but I thought depending on I thought you were in Italy at some oh France, France, wasn't it? It was France, wasn't it? I, I'm moving around. I was in France. I was working in France, um, in a university there, and I was in England, and now uh, I'm in Greece. And I like the um, wonderful weather. <laughs> it's about. 20 degrees now and sunny and the sea is very close and the mountains with snow are very close as well so I, I like I like the the environment and I like the, the fact that we are here all together in an online presentation uh, from all around the world and everybody could do uh, their own uh, way of life if you like I totally agree with that the only thing I'm missing is for everyone to be online with their webcam. That's what I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to uh, a future, and I think it'll probably happen soon, but maybe not, where everyone can have their webcam on and everyone can be, you know, we can go into everybody's uh, study or kitchen or you know outside wherever they happen to be but we can connect not just through a chat box but the way the two of us are now i think that would bring uh more uh, this awesome is a very good idea for new tools that is a, that's an idea for new tools isn't it the faster connections and lighter uh software better machines uh, so this is what we want uh, or to say it differently uh, somebody asked me, why do I need a car? And uh, I said, I need the car to transport myself, if you like. It's my transportation vehicle. And um, this person said that you actually want to go somewhere. So you want to uh, be in a nice place, or this is the point. The, transform, the transport vehicle is just the medium. So in a way, the, the tools are the medium for what we... we um, experience as human beings, like communication and interaction. These are the tools. Or, as you said, being around the world. We need these tools to make our lives uh, uh, easier and of more quality, isn't it? I think you're also very true. I think you also mentioned the fact, and, and thank you, Tom. Glad to see you. Mention the fact that, you know, we sometimes lose ourselves, even in the car. Sometimes we're we turn automatic because we think the tool is going to do it for us. So a lot of people, you know, fall asleep or not even fall asleep, but get into accidents because they're not really in the car. You know, they're, they're somewhere else and all of a sudden, oops, you know, and, and the car is right in their face. Hopefully they're not too hurt. But yes, tools sometimes make us forget that we have to be there too. So I think that's what it's all about. It's about being in the presence and i like that you ended that 
And I think that's really the point here of, you know, reflecting, being yourself. Um, and whatever, wherever you happen to be, but to be in the present. Very difficult online. <laughs> yes, I. Uh, we have a, a few minutes left. So talking about presence, uh, it's uh, it's not easy, as you say, as you say in your uh, quote uh, in your email. Awareness comes drop by drop. You become present drop by drop, and we need tools for that. We need tools to see our lives uh, so we can make decisions. I don't have these tools at the moment. I need tools to make me more aware of what I do in the car, so I won't bump into another car or uh, uh, never know how I got to that place, like uh, miss time for my life. So I need this. Uh, yeah, that's the one. So. Uh, I, I need these tools. These tools do not exist yet. You see, <laughs> I need tools to to facilitate my human functionalities, if you like. I don't think so. so. Don't... I I disagree with you. I think you have everything you need, Nikki, uh, inside you. Sorry. Yeah. I don't think you need tools. <laughs> you, have it. you have it. You have it. Wait, we can that. Now, yeah. <laughs> it's in our DNA. All right, thank, in you. Uh, thank, thank you, and I'm looking forward to uh, having yoga online. That's the next uh, thing I'd like. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I think it's possible. I really do. So I'm looking forward to that. We uh, we're going okay. to close the session as uh, Tom has added Nikki and everyone. Uh, please go into that link, and uh, we'll be able to continue in the course feed continue the discussions in addition uh you'll all be able to get uh, a certificate of participation uh, presenters will get certificates for presenting which is another thing you don't have to do anything for it you've done it but the participants will have to do a little bit of reflections all right so thank you thank you everyone thank you nikki it was nice to be in greece even for a little while and i'm looking forward to more <laughs> Bye-bye. Yeah.